Similar to the way we use snippets to code things in uh, ActionScript 3, we can also use snippets or wizard tools that the program has in order to code in HTML5. So let's take a look. This is similar to what we had in the previous movie where we had coded this to be controlled via ActionScript by clicking on this button and then making my movie jump to frame five and then clicking on this button to bring it back to the first frame. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that in ActionScript, the timeline is read starting at, num at frame one. In JavaScript or in HTML5, everything is shifted by one frame. So the first frame in JavaScript is frame zero. So that's something to keep in mind while we're coding this specific thing. Now let's use code to actually get this going. So first things first, I wanna make sure that I have named all my movie clips. You'll notice that this is button one and this is another instance of the same movie, but I called it button two. On my first frame, I have my rotating uh, windmill animation. And on my frame five, I have the rotating arrows, which I should rename. So, uh, the rotating arrows will be this the other frame. So that frame is at frame five, the, uh, this frame is at frame one or frame zero and frame four, depending on which platform uh, you're working on. And then I have a layer called actions where I'm going to be housing all my code. So first things first, if I, uh, you'll notice that this is an HTML5 document, it says canvas up here under the name, therefore that is an HTML5 document. And what I want to do is I want to, um, if I were to test this movie right now, all the frames would play like so, and it would just be doing that. It wouldn't be doing much of anything other than looping through those frames. So the thing I need to do first is stop the playback of this movie on frame zero or in the first frame. So to do that, I'll go to my actions window by pressing the F9 key on the keyboard or by uh, going under window actions. And you'll notice that because I am on canvas, or HTML5, the using wizard um, button has been activated. I still have my snippets, but uh, I also have something called using wizard. So if I go to the wizard and I click on it, it's gonna walk me through questions on what do I want to do to add code. So what did I say we wanted to do? We want to stop this movie clip on, the, on this frame. We wanna stop this movie on that frame. So let's take a look and see if we have that option. So it's gonna say, we have plenty of options here to do what we want to do, but I clearly see here, stop, that's the one we want. So I'll click stop, and then it's gonna ask me, once I select stop, it's gonna say, what do you want to stop? And I'll say, I want to start, stop this timeline. And then I'll click next. It's gonna tell me, when do you wanna stop it? When you double click, when you click, what is the event that will be activating that stop? And I'll say, well, in this frame, that's when I want to stop. So you click with this frame, and then click finish and add. You will notice that this added two lines of code. This line of code up here declares a variable. Variable this, this being the movie itself, so the actual file that I'm working on, the file on title three. So it's saying variable this equals this. So it assigns the this this, meaning the movie, to a variable called underscore this. And then it's gonna say this underscore this, meaning this variable needs to stop. So when I do that, and if I test my movie, it's gonna open up a web browser, and it's gonna be playing only on the first frame, and I can see my embedded animation, the rotating windmill in that frame. So it is working. So it has stopped my timeline from playing back. Notice that when I test, it also gives me information. It's telling me something has been done to your bitmaps, they have been packed successfully, and it also gives me a warning saying, hey, in ESOJS, which is what is being worked on right now, the actual JavaScript that is being output is through that library, is telling me the frames start at zero instead of one. So take that into account when you are using code, which is what we're about to do. The first thing we want to do is we want to apply a piece of code to this button here. And we're gonna say, when I click on that button, I wanna go to frame, what would be frame five, as you can see, but in reality would be frame four according to, what, to that warning that I just saw here. So I'll say, okay, let's select that frame like we used to do before. And instead of using the snippets this time, let's go ahead and selecting that, let's go ahead and go to the, I mean, instead of using the wizard, let's go use the snippets. And you'll notice that 
the snippets just like with action, action script snippets you'll notice that all of the subdivisions that you find under action script you will also find under canvas and so you have the ability to select quick uh, pieces of code to add onto the onto the onto your actions layer just by simply click, double clicking on them so what I want to do is I want to do a timeline navigation change I want to click double click I want to click on this button and jump to frame four so to do so I'll go to timeline navigation and then I want to click to and go to frame and stop that's what I want to do I want to click on this I want to go to frame four and I want it to stop there I don't want it to continue playing so I'll double click on that and you'll notice that a new piece of code has been added to my actions window right here this all as we know this grayed out text is all comments and you can read through them and they actually tell you what the code is doing but it is basically just telling uh, you know the code itself is the other stuff that is not grayed out so this is the code that was added, added right now and it says this button one meaning on this movie this being the movie that we're working on on title three when i click on button one add an event listener to it very it's pretty much the same way as what action script was doing it added a listener and the listener in this in this case is called click instead of mouse click then when you click when the listener is heard you will call a function and that function is declared down here and the function is saying go to and stop frame 5 now frame 5 in our case is not where we want to go frame 5 would be frame 6 according to what we just read on the in the warning so this one this frame 5 should be frame 4 for us so let's go back to the code and change that 5 on the code to 4 so that my playback head jumps to that and stays there inside that frame I have an animation this rotating arrows so it's an embedded animation in that frame right here so let's go back to the actions and let's select frame button 2 and do the same thing I want to click to go to frame and stop this time I want to go to frame 0 I want to go back to the beginning so frame 0 so I change that 5 to 0 in the code remove all those comments I don't need them and let's go ahead and test this movie so when I test it it opens up in my web browser and then if I if I click on my first button I jump to frame 4 which contains the rotating arrows and if I click on the other button it jumps back to frame 0 which is where I have the windmill so as you can see the uh, the format of the language the format of the programming is pretty much parallel to the way it was in action script 3 it follows very much the same format and the interaction is the same we just need to be mindful that the scripting is slightly different and so we use on HTML5 we can use the at wizard or the snippets as we, as we have been or uh, if you're working on uh, action script then you just use the snippets or you start typing code if you are getting familiar with the actual code